The 1v1 interview series is a production of the Boss Rush Network of Podcasts. Visit BossRush.net to listen to our podcast and read our articles, game reviews, and more. You can also follow us on Twitter at Boss Rush Network to stay up to date with our content. Thank you for listening. Hello, everyone, and welcome to 1v1 with the Boss Rush Network. I'm your host, Celeste Roberts. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Nick Corden, probably better known as Octagordon. Octordon! Octordon! Yeah, I've had a few people um, struggle with that one. <laughs> it, it looks a little bit like Octopus. It's, um, he is an artist, illustrator, and the creator of the webcomic Seven and the Web of Truth. Hello, Nick, or Octordon, I should say. <laughs> Yeah, well, well, that name came about through needing an online name because every other name was taken. So I just mashed two things together and then it stuck. Oh, I love that. So is your birthday in October? It is my birthday, yes. But um, I do also like octopuses. So that was... <laughs> <laughs> See, it could be either way, right? Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for making time. Um, like I, I tell everybody I interview, I, I have a little list of people I want to interview and I've had Nick on my list for a while. We've been mutuals on Twitter for many years now and I've enjoyed his art and his web comics and that whole realm is kind of foreign to me. I'm not an artist, so I enjoy art tremendously and I'm always fascinated by the different mediums people take. So I uh, I'm just so excited to learn more about it, and I'm sure listeners are too. So, oh, yeah, so why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, yeah, so I'm from the UK, and I've always been into art and design, but when lockdown occurred, um, I had so much more free time on my hands, so I decided to uh, fire up the Twitter account and punch out a few more pieces, and then... Um, I didn't have the intention of starting any web comics until I got into like a certain community on Twitter. Uh, before I was just doing like bits of fan art, like Legend of Zelda and stuff like that, which I think you might have seen, and that's how we became mutuals. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, I've always been into art. That's awesome. So. Do you have a background, like a degree in art, or is it just a hobby of yours? Yeah, I went to um, college and university, and I studied graphic design. I did do, like, foundation-level art as, like, modules of those courses. Um, but I wasn't really into those at the time. And then after uni, I kind of fell out of it and went and did other jobs and whatnot. Um, but it was only, like maybe the past eight to ten years or so that I've got back into a creative mindset. Oh, wow. So life kind of happened and kind of took you away from that. Yeah, that's it. You just go down a certain path and then the road keeps going and then you have to kind of steer it from there. Gosh, so how do you find time to work on your art? Because you... I'm sure you work, and do you have a family? Yeah, I've got um, two boys. I've just had my second boy. He's only a month old, so time is of the essence right now. It's so scarce. Um, I, I do have a job. I, I'm a technical illustrator, so you know when I come home from that job, it's family life. And then when everybody's in bed, that's when I get my time to do the art. So sometimes I'm like off oh, asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, so how many hours of sleep are you getting now between your your art and the new baby? One, one hour. <laughs> no, that's that. Are you exaggerating? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's a joke. Um, yeah, probably not not my eight hours, which I want. So I have to get up every two to three hours to do feeds and nappy changes and exhausting at the moment but we'll get to a point where I'll have more more of my own time to work on art and... you seem very refreshed today I have to say <laughs> well I've just smashed a coffee so that might be uh... <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, oh, that's that's wonderful. You have a lot of great things going on, and I, I'm just amazed at people who can juggle their their hobbies, their work life, and their family life. That's that's incredible. So, gosh, so what are some of your earliest memories of video games? You mentioned that you like The Legend of Zelda. Yes, love that. That's um, that's one of my favorite franchises. I'm a little bit of a I wouldn't say a Zelda nerd because I could probably, you know, not know the answers to some of the questions like you do on that another Zelda podcast. (laughs) I'm like, I don't even know that one. But yeah, um, so my earliest memory would be for my fifth birthday, I got uh, a Sega Master System with Alex the Kids. Do you know that one? Yes, yes. I'm, I haven't played it, but I've seen it before. Is it um, Alex Kidd in Miracle World or, or Wonderland or something like that? I think it's Miracle World. Yeah. Someone listening is probably going to yell at me if I'm wrong or something, I'm sure. Yeah, Miracle World does sound like <laughs> the one. But yeah, so that was the first sort of um, experience with gaming that I'd got. And I remember that being really hard at the time. There was a motorbiking level on the third level or something, and you had to jump over obstacles and I always remember dying and un- unable to get past that and then I was into Sonic the Hedgehog because we'd had the Sega Mega Drive um, and it, it just kept keeps going keeps going I could uh, chronicle my whole life with uh, video games wow so I think the Sega systems were more popular across the pond than they I mean they're popular here and they were and yeah they still are I believe I believe so yeah because um, we had the Mega Drive here and I remember a few of my friends had uh, the SNES or Super Nintendo um, but I think they were more popular in the States so I didn't actually experience like a link to the past uh, until much later on but after the Mega Drive I did did get the N64 and had a Game Boy. So like when Ocarina of Time came out, that, that was it then. That sealed the deal. Oh, that's such a great game. What is your favorite part in Ocarina of Time? Or what do you love about it just overall? Um, well, the, the, I love the Forest Temple vibes. Because um, that's like when you first become an adult and like the whole game changes. And you go into the first adult dungeon, and the the themes and the vibes in there, they're just, that's what I think of when I think of that game. Gosh, I love the music in that temple too. Yes. It's so good. And I love the hallway, that twist, that corridor. Yeah, that's that's an iconic moment, isn't it? And, and then the next room becomes flipped. Uh, yeah, yes, I love it. It's so it's so good. Are you ready for Breath of the Wild 2? Yeah, I've, I've um, purposefully put up this poster just for this interview. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how thought, special. I feel yeah, so cool. I thought I can't sit in front of a white wall and that would be pretty boring. So I thought I'd put up a little poster. <laughs> I have my little Link plushie I in have the back. I spotted that one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm so excited for it. There, there's something about that series that... So I'm not the biggest fantasy reader. I don't really watch a lot of fantasy movies, but there's something about the Legend of Zelda series that seems so approachable and so welcoming. Yeah. It doesn't seem intimidating. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, this, um, there is a lot of lore when you dig deep into them and you know you start watching all your, your theory videos and that, which I have done. But, but yeah, you can just go in with an open mind and learn from any point, any game, and yeah, you can slot right in anywhere with that series. Yeah. So out of the Zelda games you've played, which one is your favorite? Ocarina of Time is my favorite, uh, followed by Breath of the Wild. Uh, I love Majora's Mask as well, and um, Link's Awakening. Oh, did you play the remake of Link's Awakening on the Switch? I did, yes. Yeah. I loved it. It was amazing. The when when the, the Nintendo Direct came on and there was that animation of the waves and there was the ship, I knew instantly what it was. I was, I was like, and then they showed the gameplay footage and it was like the small diorama type um, 
graphic style. Yeah, I fell in love with it. It's perfect. It's so cute. I don't know if you had those little little people toys growing like up. Like Polly Pockets. Is it Polly kind Pockets? Kind of. Slightly bigger Polly Pockets. They were, I don't know if they're by Fisher Price or Play School, but they had rounded bottoms and their faces kind of looked like Link Space right. in the remake. Yeah, no, I'm not sure yeah. about that one. They're very cute. So as, as an artist out of the Zelda games you've played or even just watched if you haven't played them what art style is your favorite um i really like majora's mask art style um the original not the 3ds remake because um ocarina of time had such a like um it was like a natural fantasy art style whereas majora's mask had these um, thick black shadows and then there was like a, a key light uh, on on like link's face it was like green or blue or something and it was such a dynamic shift from Ocarina of Time at the time for me oh. I felt like that was amazing I could, I've got the Arts and Artifacts book just up there I could show you an example if you needed but you could edit that into the video if you <laughs> <laughs> that is that is so cool I because uh, they are similar the, the similar engines but I hadn't even thought about what you're describing. I mean, I, I, the like... concept art and, and like the box art, not so much in the game, because like you say, oh. yeah, like you say, the in-game engines were very similar. So I, I was referring to I, like yes. the, you know, the concept art. Now I, yep, yeah, now I can see it. It's much darker. It's a little bit more macabre. Yeah, I find. Yeah, yeah, because I think in one of the the um, it's like a splash shot. There's lots of characters in this clock town in the background, and I think there's one character that's like sort of <laughs> in, oh, in the back. Oh yeah. just a little morbid. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's been home. It's a bit creepy, and I think Link yeah. Link's got the mask of truth in that one or something like that. Yeah, he's holding. Yep. Yep, he's holding that. So yeah, it's, it is quite like macabre, but in areas. Yeah. And I, I really love that game. I'm a big fan of side quests. Do you like side quests? Yes, yeah. Um, if if it doesn't impede the main flow of the story too much, I'll do it the odd side mm -hmm. quest. But I suppose Majora's Mask is all about the side quest. Yeah, it's Breath of the Wild has a good bit of side quests as well, which I enjoy. I think they enhance the games. There's a lot to miss in Breath of the Wild because it's such an open world and you can go anywhere. So, did you get all nine hundred Korok seeds? No. <laughs> did you? I didn't either. No? <laughs> no. no. No, especially when I found out. I mean, spoiler alert for anybody's who's listening <laughs> but when you find out what the prize is for going through all of that effort it's I wasn't a little... sure if that was just like a joke like that someone had just thought <laughs> oh I'll play with the community here <laughs> it has to be it has to be it I think it's fun to explore and discover them I like the little mechanics of throwing a stone in the circle of rocks yeah. or or diving completing into the a circle and shooting the balloons yeah. and things like that. Yeah. I really like that, but I'm not quite inclined to go spend that much time looking for 900 of those. I think maybe there was that many that they wanted. If anyone went any way on the map, like any direction, they were they would mm. come across a good amount. So I think that was the reason why they put 900 in. I'm just not that patient. Oh, gosh. So is there... Is there anything that was not in Breath of the Wild that you would like to see in the sequel? Any mechanics or storyline devices? Um, you know what? A lot of people do say that they miss the, the dungeons. And, and, and while that's true for me as well, I did enjoy what was on offer in Breath of the Wild. So I think, I think that game... Even people mention the, the weapon degradation. But I, I'm totally fine with that. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I, no, I, I don't think anything was missing for me. I thought it was it was great. I loved every moment of it. I don't mind it either. It's I I I like the 
the shrines it's it's different it's it's all different and i like the open world the sandbox type gameplay because i don't really get to play those kinds of games very often i like both i i like i like what they do with twilight princess i like what they do with breath of the wild yeah same as well so same. i recently yeah. played through twilight princess um and i did um i did make notes and i was going to start like my own sort of blog and do artwork and review each game and i wanted to try and rank each zelda game and that have you seen my midnight artwork on Twitter? i don't know i i don't think so right i'll i'll show you that one and i drew that after i played through twilight and um, when it first came out on the GameCube and the Wii, I played them all the way through and uh, and loved them. But I haven't played them since, so I'd forgotten everything. And and playing through it again, I didn't think I was going to enjoy it that much, but, but I did. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. What what do you love the most about Twilight Princess? Um, I like its early dungeon variety. Um, the later dungeons can be a bit tiresome, but the the earlier ones, there's some really great dungeon designs in there, like the, um, you know, is it Windfall Temple, the one in that the tree, the very I first so. one with the monkeys. Yes. <laughs> that that's such a simple dungeon, but it's a great entry point. And then later ones like Arbiter's Ground, it's it's got some Indiana Jones vibes and. Yeah, yeah, that, that game has some great dungeon. I love, I think it's Lake Bed Temple. I, I could be wrong. It's where it has magnetic ceilings, so every time you put on the iron boots, you right, get yes. attached. Yes. I and, think it's Lake Bed. And that has, um, I don't know, that's Goran Mines, I think. Goran Mines, okay. Yeah, I got them confused. Yeah, because you, you get the bow and arrow in that one, right? Oh, I think so. <laughs> it's been a, it's been a little while since I've played that one. I was replaying it last year, but I I think I remember the the main stairway staircase in the lake bed temple. Oh, uh, the one that, that, you that have to spins keep turning. around and then the water flows down. It. Yes. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm it's very pretty. I I like water levels. They're very serene to me. Yes, that one does have some serene music. It does, and I, I just, I love it. I know. I would really like to see more sidekicks in Zelda games. I, I, I'm okay. I mean, I like Breath of the Wild as well, but I really do like sidekicks. I think they can add some fun banter, and if you're lost, I really appreciate whenever they remind you, hey, shouldn't you be going to this location? <laughs> yeah, you know what? A good sidekick does does help with them. Um... A good Zelda game because Midna in in Twilight, it's great, and I think Breath of the Wild was a little bit lonely in part. So, uh, if if Breath of the Wild two has like a mechanic where you can sort of partner up with Zelda, because that that would that would be great. I think I think fans would love that as well. So, are you are you someone who would like to play as Zelda as well? Um, you know. Yeah, I think, you know, in um, The Wind Waker, where you have Medley and um, what's the little Korok? Makar? Makar? Makar, yes. Yeah, he plays the violin. Yeah, you can control them to a certain degree. And I think I'd be okay with something like that. I think that'd work. But I don't, I don't think Nintendo would ever do a fully fleshed out Zelda playable like Link. I think they would do like a control system like Medley in the car. Have you played Spirit Tracks? I have, but it was years ago and I didn't finish it. it was... I didn't finish it either. <laughs> but you get to control Ghost Zelda. Yes. I remember they, that. Yeah. They, I think there was some stressful time, time puzzles in some mm -hmm. of the dungeons. And I think that's what sort of finished that game for me. But yes, there there are those aspects, and you also have to blow to play like a flute or something. You have to blow on yeah, your 3ds, which the pan pipes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little disgusting. 
think about it. Like, I wouldn't just hand my 3DS over to a friend after playing that game. <laughs> Here's a wet wipe. <laughs> <laughs> and, okay, have you ever experienced this in a Zelda game where a, a solution was so obvious, or at least after you discovered it, that you felt kind of silly? I think I know what you're going to say. Are you talking about Phantom Hourglass? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what I'm talking about, where you have to, I think it's a seal or something, and you, you have, have to close, close your 3DS. Yeah. Yes, I, I was actually on the bus playing that once. I, I wasn't driving back then, and I think I was in college. And I was on the bus, and I was just sat there watching the world going by, just like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. And then I got fed up, closed it, and then just sat around and waited for a bit. And then by the time I'd opened the DS back up, the puzzle was solved. And I was like, oh, <laughs> don't. <It's... laughs> or sometimes... Sometimes I do this as well. Uh, I try to remember, okay, the, the weapon I've received in this temple or the most recent weapon I've obtained is probably the solution to this puzzle. But every now and then it's not. Yes, yes, that does happen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not afraid to admit I, I have no problem looking up solutions if I'm frustrated. And I, I used to collect those video game guides when I was growing up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I used to get the ones that came free in magazines. They were like about this thick and it was yes. cheats for every game ever. <laughs> yes, yes. What? Uh, so are there other uh, series or uh, even standalone video games that you enjoy besides Zelda? Uh, yes, um, I'm really big into Monster Hunter. So Sunbreak's oh. just come out. So I've, I've not had much time to play it with having a newborn and that but yeah i'm looking forward to getting my teeth into that i have a lot of friends who are excited yeah. i've been um, i've been playing it for a long time so since freedom 2 which was on the psp so i'm a okay. bit of a monster into veteran and i've played everyone since bar the japanese ones Okay, so I'm a Monster Hunter newbie. I've seen pictures of it. So do you play? People have played it. I've never played it before. So I want tell me about it. What what sells Monster Hunter for you? Okay, for me, I, I really love the um, the monster designs. Um, each monster is, is so unique, and and they have a personality to a certain extent. Uh, the way that they move and attack. But I, I think for me. The main catch is that fight between... Because you go and hunt large monsters and then you collect resources and then you go back to like a hub and then you repeat, basically. And it, it, it's, it, there's not much more to it. Well, there probably is. I might offend some people, but yeah. The, <laughs> the cycle, You're allowed to have your own opinion. Yeah, the cycle <laughs> is like hunt, collect, repeat. And, and for me... I, I find joy in learning a monster's moveset and then sort of being engaged in a one-on-one -on -one battle, which is quite intense. Um, it requires a lot of focus to play. I, I can't play it when I've got little ones running around in front of me. I get my ass whooped if that happens. <laughs> well, you just have to get them to help you. You're just going to have to hand them the controller and say, you, you take care of this boss. <laughs> Well, it goes, if if the little one wants to play, I'll usually put Mario Kart on. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a good one. Do you have Do you have a favorite course in Mario Kart? Well, um, the Choco Mountain one came up today. That's one of the new ones in the, the pack. Oh, yeah. You know, the, the online pack. So I was saying, look, the mountain made of chocolate, and he was loving that. <laughs> Oh gosh, it's like Willy Wonka almost. Yeah. Oh, that's adorable. Yeah, so does he it. enjoy? Does he enjoy Mario games? Well, he's weirdly getting into Mario. Um, he's seen a few videos of, like Mario Kart, and then he's seen a, a bit of the Lego, and um, you know the Mario Lego set. He's seen yes. a bit of that, and he's starting to recognize his face, and he's like Mario. So. Could have a little Nintendo fan on my hands in the future. Oh, 
I, I grew up with Nintendo. My, my dad's a gamer, and my yeah, two younger sisters like video games as well. But we always had Nintendo systems. Yeah, same. Well, apart from the, the oh. Sega bit, but after the N64, <laughs> it, yeah. So are there any games coming out either for... Um, do you play other systems currently, or it's mostly Nintendo? I've got a PS4, um, but I only really play No Man's Sky on that. Okay. But that's coming out on Switch soon, which I'm quite hyped about. And then I think my PS4 might become redundant after that. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? I don't play much uh, else. So, okay, so are there any games coming out for any system that you're intrigued by? Um, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 looks really good. Um, I've played the other ones and I loved them. So, yeah. What about you? Are you looking forward to any games? I, I, I feel like I'm being like... I know it's an interview about me, but I'm going to fire one back at you. Oh, you're so... Oh, God. You want to put me on the spot now. It's okay. It's okay. So I'm really looking forward to Stray, oh, that okay. game about the little cat. Yeah. Is that on the PS4? PS5? I, they're going to have it on PlayStation 5, but I think they're also making a port for PS4, which is great because we don't have a, a PS5 yet. So I'm very much looking forward to the game about the little cat. Um, I have seen screenshots, but I'm not quite sure what that's about. What do you do as the cat in that one? I don't know if he or she is like the last mammal or living creature. Oh, okay. I, I don't know. I'm not sure if the rest of the world is full of maybe androids, right. perhaps, oh, or I'm not sure if there are humans, but it looks like you're just a cat left alone to explore. It looks kind of uh, cyberpunkish, that Neo kind of look, which I really like. I really want to play cyberpunk. We have it. I just I haven't found the time to play it. I, I just finished um, Self Checkout Unlimited. Okay, that I've not heard of that one. Is it? It sounds like a bit of a, a shopping game. <laughs> uh, well, you, you know, it's it's a walking simulator. Um, it was only five dollars U.S. dollars on I think Steam, and it's at most two hours long. At the most, I really like walking simulators. Do you like walking sims? Um, I'm not sure what a walking simulator is it might be self-explanatory oh. and i might be playing dumb no, here, but... don't don't feel bad um uh you are in for a treat if you try any if you if you enjoy storytelling that way and first person perspective and like reading notes and exploring right. um what? what remains of edith finch is one dear esther firewatch a Soma. Right. I have heard of a lot of those games you've mentioned, but mm -hmm. I didn't realize that was the category walking simulator. Yes, yes. Um, I really enjoy it because I really like storytelling and I like taking my time and looking at everything. I'll read every novel, every note I can find. So if you want to watch me play a video game, you might get very bored. Celeste, you've spent enough time reading this diary. Please move on. <laughs> <laughs> But in self, I don't want to spoil it too much, but Self Checkout Unlimited takes place in a mall. Oh, okay. So it's um, a little bit shocking. I'm not, a little bit, but you're by yourself. Right. And, and there's no you... other people, right, okay. Mm -mm. I'm going to check it's, it out um... after this. Yeah, it's, it, it deals with a lot of um, existential topics. It's, it's not... I don't want to say it's not lighthearted, but towards the end, it starts dealing with a lot of psychological and philosophical topics that really make you start just thinking about the meaning of life. And it's interesting that they were able to implement this into a shopping mall. Right, and yeah. I, I'm curious if our shopping malls are similar to your shopping malls in the UK. I think your shopping malls are on a much grander scale than ours. Um, really? Yes. Um, I, we have a, a couple in like the big cities. I think there's um, the Trafford Centre in Manchester that has everything you could think of in one place. And I imagine most American malls are like that. 
Yes, and you know what's, um, I don't know if it's like this over there, but a lot of our malls are dying out. There's actually a subreddit dedicated to dead malls. Right. Where they're just, that are dying, maybe just a few stores or they've closed completely. Yeah, that, that's happened a lot in the UK as well. I think the high street has taken a hit, so. Oh, yeah. We, we have, I don't know what the term would be, but like in... A city next to me instead of a mall you will go on a boulevard and it'll have a stretch of different stores so you'd have to drive park at one store and then if you want to go to the other store you have to do the same thing is that kind of yeah, how it is i think that's the, i think the high street yeah i think did you say boulevard that yeah yeah, yeah it's it's called it, i just call it a boulevard i, I could be using the wrong term <laughs> yeah that's not a term used over here but yeah it is basically like a long street with loads of shops on it and whatnot i think yes that's what we're really yeah. i like that i like that a lot it sounds fancier but really <laughs> i think it does like oh boulevard now i'm thinking of the green day song oh <laughs> boulevard broken broken dreams, dreams. Right. <laughs> so that's but that's uh that's what i played recently was self-checkout unlimited right i'm gonna um, have a look I, I, I'm curious what you think about it. It's very short. Just uh, it's it's pretty though, and I like that the jazzy music. It's very soothing. But so speaking of art, I okay, we have to talk about your art because I really enjoy your Seven and the Web of Truth comics that you've been posting. And you recently entered. Is it a contest that you entered? Yes. So um, where I post my web comic Seven. Um, it's called Webtoon, and they basically host web comics. Um, you can upload your own. They have paid gigs like originals, and so they have opened this contest. It's a big one. There's, it's um, you have to create a action-based comic, um, provide so many panels and an episode, and the prize fund is like I think. Fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, it's pretty big, and and there's a big wow. big prize fund for second and third place as well. Um, and there's a chance at becoming an original. So I thought I'd entered that. I've um, I finished it and uploaded it yesterday. It's called Shadow Chasers. <laughs> I read it right before this interview. Oh, I wanted you read to be prepared. it. Thank you very much. What did you think? I. I, okay, I'm a big Resident Evil fan. Okay. So I got Resident some Evil Resident fans. Evil vibes. <laughs> <laughs> and, but I have to know what happens. Okay, do you have something else ready to go or you're waiting to see what happens with this edition? Yeah, I, I'm basically just waiting for, see how it does in the contest before I put any more time into it. Because I would really like to finish seven before uh, I carry on with Shadow Chasers. So I'm sorry if I've left you on a cliffhanger. You're going to be hanging on oh. for a long time. <laughs> well, I, I have to know, what what's this person's problem? Is this even a person? Um, so do you have the plot in your head ready to go? Or are you kind of just waiting to see what happens before you develop it? Yeah, I, I've got ideas and, and thoughts. But, so the, the theme is that the, the world is slowly coming to a stop and this group of characters are going to get caught on the side of the planet which is in the night time basically so they're going to be stuck in a permanent darkness and i would like it if they sort of traveled this huge distance to get to the light side of the earth so i, I think the story will be about their journey and if you if you've read the pilot, you'll you see the the shadow that comes out of out of the the man on the floor. There's going to be more shadows of um, they're going to be different sizes and different threat levels. So I kind of like the idea of them dealing with that as they travel, and then yeah. So it, it's sort of in here, but it's not written down as such. I'm just going to see how how we do in the contest. But for now, I'm going to go uh, back it, to seven. 
well, not only is the art good, the storytelling is very, very good because I, I'm, I'm like, he has to tell me what happens, what is going on, and you know, you know what sticks out the most to me from that pilot, the part where on the radio they're listening to the speaker says something about the world, uh, the earth is turning slower and slower, so a portion of the earth could be in eternal darkness. That was right at the end, wasn't it? I, I was hoping that that would have a significant impact on readers, that they would like want to find out more and find out what happens to these characters. But I'm glad that you've said that that part sort of had an effect on you. Well, it, um, and I don't know if you intended this because I know like readers interpret things differently. This is, so it reminded me of just all the doom and gloom that we hear about in, in reality about uh, global warming, about, you know, overpopulation, uh, just, just all these, the climate change, just everything bad that can happen in the world. And I'm, I thought, you know, Maybe it's not such a f so far fetched that half the world could start turning slower and slower, and some some people are going to be very unlucky. Yes, yes, that would be. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I thought that it be. Oh, no, I can't. I spoil it. I can't. I can't spoil okay, it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know it's a tease. I was it's about to tease. reveal the end. Oh no! Don't don't do that. To me. <laughs> but oh gosh! So how? So at the time of this recording, which is July second, twenty twenty two, when does the contest end? July thirty first is the end of submissions. So okay, submissions is still open, so anyone can enter for now. And then August to September is the judging period. And then in September is the reveal of the prizes and winners and whatnot. So I've got a bit of waiting around to do. Oh, and, that's and that's got to be the worst part. <laughs> that's the worst part. Well, I, I really wish you luck. And can you say the name of the comic again, just so people can know what to look for? It's Shadow Chasers. So, and it's on Webtoons. Oh, that's awesome. And so the, the one that you've been working on, I, I would say the most would be Seven and the Web of Truth, right? Okay, you want to tell us about that one? So Seven and the Web of Truth is about a spider living in a bog world. He has seven legs, hence the name. Um, he, he's struggling to find his place. Um, so he lives in this small town called Potstead. Uh, but he's the only spider there, and he doesn't really know it yet, uh, and he doesn't understand why he doesn't fit in. So, the the comic is about how Seven learns about his identity, comes to accept his identity. Um, it's about him fitting in, and 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 this probably um, rings true for a lot of people. Um, how they struggle to find their own identity and fit in. So I hope that resonates with those sorts of people. Um, so yeah, there's um, lots of moments where Seven is sort of fleeing from attacking birds oh. and there are other bugs who are sort of uh, foe. You don't know who's friend or foe. Uh, <laughs> it, it's quite hard to put in a nutshell, but that again, that's on web to and uh, I'm about halfway through the story oh wow yeah. so it has an end yes yeah it does have an end it's it's not like an ongoing continuous series like some people do with web comics um, the whole idea for me was to create a physical comic um, I wanted oh. to do that before I found out about web tunes um, and then I just started posting on there and it was a great platform for me to just get motivated and crack on. That's incredible. And how long have you been working on Seven? I've had the story in my head for about five years or so, but I've actually been working on the comic for 
one and a half years. Wow, you've made a lot of progress. Yeah, it, it, it's a long time to only be halfway through the story. I, I never, ever thought it would take this long. So so what what is the challenge? Like, what as an artist, what are some of the challenges with progressing? Is it just life getting in the way? Or do you have writer's block sometimes? Um, yeah, writer's block was a big one. Um, writing the whole plot out. Was, was quite a challenge because I'm not really a writer and I've never wrote a comic before. So that was a challenge. But I think getting over um, getting over the fact that you might... I, I'm quite a, a harsh self-critic. So when I see my own work, I, I kind of can cringe or sort of scrap it and not enjoy it. So I think getting over that and just putting stuff out there was um, the biggest hurdle for me because I kept redrawing things and by the time you've redrawn one thing you, you've not got you've not got it out there for the world to see so I think the hardest thing was just to accept your level and, and <laughs> just post <laughs> it, now the drawings that the art style seems very um, uh, like very fun, very lighthearted. Would you say that this comic is family friendly or is it for a more mature audience? Uh, Seven is definitely family friendly. I've, I've tried to keep it sort of age appropriate for all ages. I have actually had one reader tell me that they read it with their kids and they love it, which was really quite a nice moment for me. That had to be so heartwarming <laughs> to hear that. <laughs> yeah, there's there's no swearing or mature themes or no like grotesque violence or anything like that. And a lot of people have said that they've got um, like Disney vibes, um, like Amphibia and um, Gravity Falls, those sorts of vibes from it. Oh, yeah. It does remind me of something. I can't think of what it. I get Minish Cat vibes for sure okay. from the Legend of Zelda. Yes, I have taken inspiration from Minish Cat. There's one panel where a um, this three antagonist spiders who Seven hasn't met yet, but there's, there's a shot where they are walking and looking up at like these clover grass grass blades and then these clover leaves, and that's that was inspired by the Minish Cat. You know, when, when you, there's some box art and there's, um, there's like the foliage clovers in the background yes, yes. And, and they look like big trees and I felt like that was sort of great. So I pinched to that. <laughs> oh, I love that. That is really cool. It, it's, it's very inspiring and it's very charming i did you ever watch honey i shrunk the kids or honey we shrunk ourselves yes i did see that um when i was a kid and actually going back to video games i've seen a, a game on xbox called grounded and that's about kids shrunk in the garden and they it's like an open world i think it's open world you know, you can create your character and then you fight spiders and there's bugs and that that game looks like how funny I shrunk the kids. <laughs> yes, it oh okay, it's not bug snacks, grounded. No, grounded snacks. I think it's okay. called, yeah. I think it's on Xbox. Um, okay, I'm gonna have to look at that. We have a Game Pass, which I really enjoy because right. I can try different games. Yeah, check it out. It looks great and I've seen that and I thought that it, it reminded me of Seven. And I wanted to play it, but I don't have an Xbox. <laughs> oh, I know. I, I wish. I mean, I get it why companies have exclusives. It's to get people to buy their systems. But it's also a little frustrating. <laughs> like, I don't feel like dropping three to four hundred dollars today. <laughs> but do you have any other projects besides this contest and seven going on or that you plan on working on? Um, I've been trying to dabble in a little bit of animation. Um, but it's just bits and bobs, experiment wise. So yeah, not really got any other projects other than that. Okay, now this might be a silly question, but I, I didn't think to ask it until just now. What do you use to create your comics? Like what programs? 
Okay, I use a iPad Pro with Clip Studio Paint. Okay. Yeah, it's Clip That's Studio is a popular one amongst uh, digital artists. It's, uh, I think the the company who make it Celsius. I think they might be okay. Korean or Japanese. And it started off as a manga, a manga uh, production art app. And now it's just sort of, it's it's getting closer and closer to Photoshop in terms of like all the amount of tools that are available to you and things like that. And it's um, much cheaper than Photoshop as well. So, and it's great. It's perfect. That's awesome. So have when you were growing up, did you like to draw, hand draw? Yeah, I did a lot of traditional stuff. I drew a lot of fan art. I drew a lot of like Zelda and like Banjo Kazooie and stuff like that. I love Banjo Kazooie. You know, it just turned twenty four. Did it? Wow. I, I've seen that it's on the um, online expansion pack on on Switch, and uh, I've been meaning to play it to relive some uh, of my childhood days. What's your favorite level in Banjo Kazooie? Um, I, I haven't played it in since I haven't played it since the N sixty four days, so. I couldn't even tell you what levels were in there. I knew there was, um, I know. There was like a, a snowy Christmas level. And I remember there was yes. a, like an, a key, an icy key behind a glass wall. And that I remember trying for like weeks to try and get behind that, but I don't think it was ever achievable, was it? I don't think it's, I don't think it's accessible. I think it's a big tease. In that game, I think they bring it in Banjo Tooie, and I think you can actually use it. I could be wrong. Right at, at the time, I heard that um, you, you remember Sonic and Knuckles how it had the the flip open top, and you could put, I heard that Banjo Tooie was going to do that, and those keys that were hidden, I think they were going to be accessible through that sort of cartridge connection. Oh. But that could have been ruined. I don't know. Yeah, there are so many rumors back then, and, and you really didn't have a way to dispel those rumors but i know i played a little bit of the game boy advance banjo kazooie game i think it's called grunty's revenge oh, okay i didn't i didn't know that one yeah, yeah i think it's kind of top down from what i remember it's not 3d but i i've played banjo kazooie and banjo Tooie, and i played a little bit of grunty's revenge i haven't played nuts and bolts yet oh no i haven't played that one either some people, I, I hear mixed reviews on it. Some people really love it, and some people don't love it. But I, I'll have to find out for myself and form my own opinion. <laughs> yeah, well, you have to with any game, really, don't you? Yeah, that's that's the thing. Whenever, okay, this might be weird. I don't really like to read too much about video games that look intriguing to me. If okay, like so, if you would tweet something about a video game that I look at a screenshot and it looks interesting to me, I'll go follow the developers or the game's Twitter profile. But I try not to read a lot about video games before I play them because I want to go in without any preconceptions. I want to experience it as honestly as possible. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you on that one. Apart from if I'm unsure whether I want to play it, then I might look at the odd review, but yeah, that... Mm-hmm. With Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak, I've tried to stay away from any spoilers or reviews or any tweets on Twitter. So I've gone in with like a sort of, like you say, no preconceptions. Yeah, it's, I mean, I understand why people would want to read reviews, especially if, I mean, that's a lot of money, possibly, you're going to spend on a game. Yeah. Unless you wait for it to go on sale. I suppose there is that spending all that money in. or if you're buying for a child and you're worried okay is this appropriate for my five-year-old <laughs> <laughs> maybe not grand theft auto maybe don't let your well <laughs> oh well i um I, before i got into a creative career uh, after you i worked with um, some kids in care and i i did a home visit with one and <laughs> There probably was like a six or seven, eight year old playing Grand Theft Auto. Oh wow! Did did they seem to um, <laughs> be uh, mature enough to play that game? 
I don't think they really understood what was going on, but they just loved the fact that they could just get in any car and drive around the city and, and just cause yeah. mayhem, basically. <laughs> You could do that with Crazy Taxi, yeah. Martha Simpson, <laughs> Sit and Run. I, I mean, I can't, I really can't say anything because I was playing the old Mortal Kombat games when I was very young. I'd play with my dad. But it, what intrigued me about those is, as you probably remember, there weren't a lot of female protagonists you could play as in video games back then on Super Nintendo, Genesis, or the regular Nintendo. They were, the female protagonists were mostly in fighting games like Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, Killer Instinct. So I was drawn to those games because, oh, finally, I can play as a girl. I can play as as a female fighter. And even if she doesn't look like me, it, oh, I'm playing as someone who I feel represents me. So I think, I think it's really important representation. I think video games are getting better at that too. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, there's lots of different themes that um, games are getting better at exploring as well, like mental health and, yeah. and things like that. Yes, yes, I, and I'm very happy for that. So if you if you decide, speaking of mental health, if you decide to delve into a walking simulator, I highly recommend What Remains of Edith Finch, especially since you do web comics. Right. Okay. So is there um, an artistic theme in that one? There is. Um, I don't want to spoil it too much, but you you play little vignettes of different characters and to try to understand more about the protagonist family. And they're. I don't want to spoil it, but let's just say comic books play a vital role in one of the characters' stories. And I, I think you will enjoy the creative expression with how they tell that character's story. And if you ever play it, I, you have to let me know what you think. It's, it's okay if you don't like it, but <laughs> I have to know what you think. I, I have heard of that one, and I did hear that it got some good reviews. Um, it's only a couple of years old, right? I think so. Um, at least maybe the last, within the last 10 years, maybe. Um, maybe. I, time, I don't even know what time is anymore. We're already in July, so I can't, <laughs> I don't, I can't. I can't think of it, but that is true. Yes, I love that video games are covering those themes. So so you've talked about some other projects with getting into animation, and what's a way that listeners can support you? Um, right now, I think the best way that someone could support me is, is to just check out my comics on Webtoon, um, read them, tell me what they think, you know, like, comment, subscribe, share it with their friends, that sort of thing. So if, you know, listeners or anyone watching this wants Drabbly, just go on webtoon.com and search for Seven and Web Truth and Shadow Chasers. Yeah, I, di- I did try and start a Patreon, um, maybe during lockdown, to help with some finances or whatnot, but I, I couldn't I couldn't keep it up, if you know what I mean. There's a lot of sort of work behind the scenes to keep, I don't know, keep, keep Patreon going, and I, I felt like that asking people <laughs> for money, for, for me not doing anything, <laughs> is not fair, so, so I had to stop that. But yeah, the best way is to just look at my stuff and... Just tell me what you think. Where can people follow you? I'm mostly active on Twitter. Um, my username is at Octorden. That's O-C-T-O-R-D-E-N. Um, I do have an Instagram as well, but I- I'm not really enjoying that as much. So yeah, if you're on Twitter, connect with me on there. And... Awesome. If you ever establish another Patreon account or a Ko-Fi or anything like that, please be sure to share it on Twitter so we can support you. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, I will. I'll uh, I'll let you know. (laughs) Well, Nicholas, this has been so much fun. Is is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, Yeah, I'd just like to apologize because I'm not very good about talking about myself. I know we wanted to like interview me about my art and we ended up like chatting a lot about video games which was that was enjoyable 
But yeah, I'm not. I'm not very good at like bigging myself. <laughs> well, that that's okay. This um, I I view the one v one series as a way not only for people to get to know more about quote unquote your claim to your claim to fame, but also get to know you as a person more. What what are your interests? What are your passions? A little behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah, it's been really fun. I, I've enjoyed it. It's been nice to uh, connect. In the, have a little chat it's been good oh thank you so much for making time especially with your your two little ones and your wife and your job and <laughs> just all the chaos it's of life of going on <laughs> but thank you again nicholas oh, thank you for having me for from making time and um, listeners, you can certainly go and follow him at the links he shared. We'll also have those when we share this interview and you can find more 1v1 interviews and Boss Rush's other podcasts at bossrush.net and you can follow me, Celeste, on Twitter at FairyCrypt. But until next time, we'll talk to y'all later. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.